Hi and welcome. This is going to be a quick tutorial, but I'm going to cover a couple of concepts that I believe are important and I hope they are helpful. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is conventions when it comes to organizing your classes and packages. Well, it's a known fact that we need to stick to some standard conventions when we write code, especially in huge enterprise applications where the number of classes are going to run to a huge number. So what we normally do is we organize them into a, you know, a set of packages that are named as per the convention and then even the class names are uh, as per the conventions and they are uniform throughout at least one web application if not all the applications that a team develops. So when I say package names and class names it could be as simple as what I've done over here. So here I have uh, you know I have an aspect package where I would now put all aspects and I have a model package where I would put all the model objects and then I have a service package where I would put the the service classes and of course if you're having different uh, interfaces and implementation classes you would probably have a dot impl package which holds the implementations while the service you know, package will have only the service interfaces so these are typically found in most of the enterprise applications these are very simple rules that i've said but um, adhering to those rules can be very helpful and i'll show you one such use when it comes to what we are discussing about which is aspect oriented programming so here if i open the logging aspect over here if you see the kind of point cuts that you would normally apply most of the times it would be something like this you would use the execution point cut expression and configure what are the methods whose execution will trigger your advice methods so what happens here is you need to provide uh, class names and package names that will trigger the execution so you can actually narrow down which methods of which classes are going to trigger this advice. So typically what would happen is let's say you have some kind of a logging advice or a transactional advice that you'd want to apply. Uh, generally, let's say you want to apply it to all your um, business service methods. So when it comes to that, when it comes to writing point cuts for such situations, it's very handy to have a predefined packet structure and a predefined class name convention so that you can write your point cut expressions easily. So here, let's say I want to write a point cut for, let me write a new one here. Let's say I want to apply a point cut for all service methods. So it could be as simple as point cut. execution I'll put star over here and then here I can write the uh, actual package name org dot service dot star so what I'm doing here is I'm mentioning the package for all my service classes so you know if we have a convention followed for all the classes this becomes very easy to do so here I can add a star so that I'm saying for all methods of all classes inside the service package and then I use a dot dot so that I'm not worried about the arguments so again this can be modified further depending on your requirements as long as you have the naming conventions proper. Now let's say for example you want this to be applied to all your service classes but then there are a few other classes in the same package which are not service classes and you don't want the package you know this point could be applied for that. So as long as you have this naming convention set like you know if your class names all end with the service for your uh, service classes then you could as well do service over here. So sorry that's the method name We've over here you could have a service so it picks up all the classes as long as it ends with service so in summary naming conventions are important and you will feel the importance of that when you're writing a tricky point cut expression in spring aop okay so having said that let's move on now let's say you have your uh, 
your application fully coded and you have followed really strict naming conventions and everything is fine but let's say you have a particular aspect that you need to write and uh, you cannot really find a pattern that covers all the target methods that you have in mind now let's say i have uh, uh, i have this shape service now let's say i want uh, an advice to be applied to a get circle of the shape service and I want it to be applied to, let's say, take this triangle. I want it to be applied to a set name of the triangle. Now, how would you do, uh, you know, how do you write a point get expression for such a such a situation? Well, one way to do that is you get the point cut expression for this method, and then you get the point cut expression for uh, this method. And then I've already told you about the AND operator in when it comes to point cut expressions. You can say expression A and AND expression B in your uh, you know in your point cut expression and then it's going to take care of applying that advice method to both these uh, target methods well this is fine because we have two methods but what if we have more what if we have like 10 such methods we don't really fit into a pattern or what if you have a possibility of you know you being able to apply this kind of an advice for different methods which you are not even aware of and which you cannot predict a pattern for for situations like that there is a very a very handy uh, way of describing these point cut expressions and, that, and that's by using custom annotations. So we can write custom annotations and we can apply those custom annotations to all the different methods where you want this advice to be applied. And then in your uh, in your advice, you can actually have a point cut expression saying all the methods for which this annotation is applied. So that's, that's a very easy way to do this. And uh, it's more readable also when i say readable what i mean is if you look at a service for example see if you look at this service class over here you wouldn't know that this particular method has an advice tied to it you can find that out only by going to through each and every aspect that you have in your uh, in your code you need to go through each and every point cut expression and see if there is a particular method that matches this point cut expression so you will have to evaluate this method let's say for all these different point cut expressions and see if any of them match so uh, if you use this custom annotation it's very handy and it's more readable so I'll just give a quick example of how to do that now I will use this logging aspect itself I would want to have a custom loggable annotation and I want to apply that to different methods and I'm not really sure what the you know what the point cut expression is I don't have to worry about it all I do is I apply a point cut expression for the annotation itself so let me create a quick uh, annotation here I'll call this loggable finish and uh, this is all I need to do I don't need to have anything else you can of course add extra you know code for this but for this example I'm going to stick to this so I have a loggable interface I'm sorry uh, an annotation so now what I'll do is I'll in my aspect let's take this one I have an around advice which is applied to all getters now what I'll do is if I want to write a point cut expression for this loggable I will use this point cut expression called at annotation this at annotation takes the uh, annotation class itself with the complete package name. So I'll say org dot kashik dot java brains dot aspect dot loggable. So now what I'm doing is instead of specifying a point cut that is tied to the method signatures or the class names or the package names, what I'm doing is I'm tying it to an annotation. So no matter what the method name is, no matter what the class name is, as long as a method is annotated with loggable, this advice is going to apply for that method. So now that I have defined this, it gives me the freedom to apply this loggable annotation and this advice to any method I want just by annotating it. Now let's say I want to apply this to a get circle. So what I do is I do a at loggable. It is as simple as that. Now I'll have to import this. So now I don't have to worry about the name or the naming conventions. Save this. So what Spring is going to do is it's going to look at this advice. It's going to say, OK, I'm going to apply this advice for all the methods that have the annotation as loggable. And then it sees this 
method has the loggable annotation so it's going to apply the advice for the git circle so you can apply it to as many number of methods as you want and you can of course apply it to new methods without having to change the point cut expression that you have defined over here so just to test that it works let me run this i'm doing a git circle which is annotated over here with loggable and this my around advice should execute because that's what is the point get expression so let's run this well there you go the advice has been run but not because of the point get expression that we had defined earlier it was not for all the getters it's happening only for one particular method here because it's all, it's the only one which has been named loggable you can of course extend it to other methods just by adding this annotation so these are some handy tips which would be very helpful and it, it also makes your code readable just by looking at this method you can actually see that okay this is a loggable annotation and the loggable advice will be applied to this method so that way i found this very helpful